All right, let's see how this actually works. It's pretty simple, but I wanted to make just a separate video for everyone here so that you can see how really effective and how easy this is. We made the Play Attention screen look like a web page. So you can tell right here as we get close to this, we take the mouse and slide right over the top of the tabs at the very top of the page. And you can see, you get drop-down menus virtually like you'd see on any web page online. So immediately, if you're accustomed to moving around the internet, you're going to be very comfortable moving around and play attention. Now, secondly, we've made the game menu down below very large. So if you want to come in and you want to immediately play games, it's very, very simple to do. Also notice that each game is played for a reason. Right? We know that we need to direct and sustain our attention, so we play attention stamina to do that. And you can notice also when I mouse over this, we have a beginner, intermediate, and advanced skill option. We'll always begin in beginner, and play attention will tell us when to move to intermediate or advanced, which offer greater time cha challenges and distractors. We also can play visual tracking so that we can learn to move about the screen with our attention, just like following the teacher or employer during a staff meeting or uh, during a lesson at class. So I can take my attention and follow that person. Then we have time on task, the ability to start a task right away and then finish it with an, an appropriate amount of time. This is related to seat work or homework. And we'll actually show you today how we apply that to homework itself. All right, we have short-term and working memory modules so that we can take multiple step instruction. We have the new activity called social skills which allows us to sharpen our social skills enough to where we can learn to make friends and keep friends. We have motor skills to learn to coordinate mind and body so that I have fewer accidents and I have better handwriting. Academic bridge where I learn to apply the skills that I need from time on task to real homework just as if I'm practicing math, reading, or spelling and I can learn to do that on my own. A 20-minute homework assignment should take 20 minutes, not two hours in a fight. And finally, we work on discriminatory processing, the ability to filter out distractions. One of the first things I want to show you, though, before we actually get into the games, uh, is the Play Attention hardware. All right, Let's take a look at the hardware for Play Attention. You can see the Play Attention interface box is about the size of an iPhone, fits in the palm of her hand. And if she tilts the back of the box around for us here, you see that there are no wires here. It's an entirely wireless device. And we use a Bluetooth dongle. You're going to get one of these with the Play Attention box. It looks like this. It plugs into a USB port on your computer, and it talks to that box wirelessly. So you have no physical connection to the computer. One of the very cool things about this is that you could be standing 30 feet away from your computer and still control it by mind alone. All right? Now, on the front of the interface box, you see a couple of ports right here that allow us to plug in our um, sensors, right? And then next to that, you have the on-off light, on-off switch. Let's go ahead and turn the unit on. The unit will be green as it learns it's cycling through, and then it'll flash red when it's ready to communicate with a computer. It's that simple, okay? Now, with this, you're going to get body wave technology, all right? Now, BodyWave is brand new. You may have seen the helmet on our website because we haven't updated that in a little while. All right. BodyWave technology is brand new. All right. It's the first time in history that we are able to access brain data through the body. So no more need to wear a headset or gels or pace. We will be looking at brain activity through the body. Here's how it works. This is just a simple sleeve like you would wear an iPod or an MP3 player when you went jogging. Let's go ahead and put the play attention device right down in the sleeve. All right? We slide that down in the sleeve. We plug the sensors in. Good. And on the back of this, look at what we have. There are three dry contacts. One, two, three. Those must contact the skin because we want to monitor what the brain is doing and we're going to get that through the skin. All right, so We'll close that armband on. All right. And we slide it right off. It has to contact the skin, but it's that simple. As you saw in the previous video, 
and we actually are monitoring brain activity through the body. Now, let's see how this actually works. All right, so we'll just go over here to Attention Stamina. Let's click on Attention Stamina Beginner, please. And we'll select from one of these characters. And I think we'll just stay with the orca. Now, when we click on Play, we're going to see the orca swimming across the top of the screen. Now, with her mind alone, her mind is the mouse or joystick, right? With her mind alone, she's going to make the orca swim to the bottom of the screen. All right. Now, in addition to that, what we'll see is that her behavior is actually a factor here. That there's a direct correlation between behavior and attention. So let's see how this works. First thing I want to show you in the upper portion, left-hand portion of the screen, is the attention meter. All right. When she's paying full attention, she can push that bar up to a full red. When she loses attention, as a matter of fact, I'll tap her shoulder here. Notice she doesn't have enough attention. The bar goes down to white, and the orca goes the wrong way. All right now, I'm going to stop, and I need you to get back to full attention. Beautiful. Push it all the way down, please. Now, again, I'll pull back so you can see her do this. No hands required. Her mind is the mouse or joystick. Excellent. Now, attention is finally concrete. It's controllable. It's right in front of us. Now, when she's going to get rewarded, she gets treasure for being down there. So she gets rewarded for being in the focus state. Now, full attention, please. Great. Can you fidget around in your seat for me like students do in class? So this is what happened. Here's the what's happening with behavior. She fidgets, and you notice the attention bar has gone down. Not enough attention. The orca is going the wrong way. Now I need you to stop the behavior and get back to a full attentive state. Beautiful. All right. Can we pause right there? You did a great job for me. All right, so we hit the escape key on the keyboard, and that pauses the game. But we've just seen something remarkable here. We've seen a direct connection between attention and behavior, and that sets up the foundation for the behavioral shaping program in Play Attention. As a matter of fact, I'll model this for you with my assistant, just as if she were my sixth or seventh grader. Let's see how this is done. When you were fidgeting around, what actually happened to the screen character? He started to float up. What does that mean, though? that I'm not paying attention. Exactly. You're not paying enough attention. Do you do that in class? Probably, yeah. Yeah. I think your teacher tells me you're on your desk, you're under your desk, you're kicking the chair in front of you all day long. What are your grades like? Not so good. Would you like to be a superstar? Yeah. I can help you get there. I'll set goals. We know your fidgeting is causing you problems there. I'll set goals. And if you reach those goals, I'll bank your points, or play attention will bank them. So let's say we earn 10 points by the end of the week. What would you like to get with those points? A uh, friend over on Saturday. Great. Great selection. And long term, 500 points over the course of the next few months? A new MP3 player. Great. Very inexpensive now, and we can get one of those so we get both near-term and long-term rewards. So let's see how we do this. When we're working in Play Attention, I will use a special chart that comes with Play Attention if I need to shape behaviors. And this is a wet erase board. And you notice there are a series of behaviors here on the board. There are 18 different ones. If I need a 19th one that we did not include, I could write it in. But she is a fidgeter, so I'm paying attention to that. I just noticed that she fidgeted 12 times, so I simply put 12 in that little box. Now when we end Play Attention right here, we just click Yes, I do want to quit. That same chart appears electronically. And Play Attention is reasonably intelligent here because it knows she's a fidgeter. It's highlighted in blue. I simply add in 12 because I saw her fidget 12 times. Then, in, immediately, I hit Submit. And in real time, I get immediate positive feedback about her behavior. Right? So in just one activity, we have seen her attention in real time. For the first time in her life, she gets to see her attention in real time. Attention is concrete and controllable. Now, with that, we saw a direct relationship between attention and behavior, and we have a full behavioral shaping program built around this. 
Now, I'm not going to go into depth on this. You can see a webinar if you'd like uh, to see how this works in depth. But we're giving immediate positive feedback. And research tells us that immediate positive feedback has an incredibly empowering effect on the brain of an ADHD student as well. All right, So that we can make changes and we can shape. Not only does play attention give you feedback, real-time feedback, regarding your behaviors, but it also gives you data based on your performance during the game. You can see a date and time stamp here, and then you also see my duration. I worked on that activity for a minute and 48 seconds. Of that minute and 48 seconds, I was actually paying attention. I was in the zone for 60% of the time. It also gives me added bonuses. I, I can see how many coins I received. It says I did not complete it because I did not play for the full five minutes. And it gives me my final score. The next screen is going to show whether or not I reached today's goal because play attention has intelligence written into it which allows you to do goal setting. So when I hit next, you can see that my goal for today was to play for at least two minutes and one second. I did not complete that today. So the next screen is going to give me a new goal based on today's performance. Tomorrow when I work on play attention, I want to play for at least one minute and 58 seconds. And if I do reach that, I'm going to earn one point. So essentially what play attention is doing every step of the way is setting goals which will challenge the student to improve. You don't have to worry about that. It's built into play attention's intelligence so that it does it for you. What I really want to show you that's very, very important is what we call academic bridging. And that's taking play attention and using it to do real homework. Now you can see I have an assistant and since she's an adult she's going to be balancing her checkbook. Let's go ahead and start the application here. The application is called Attention Monitor and you can see it looks like a heartbeat machine. And notice the little red ball at the very bottom and it has a little red line trailing and I'm going to zero in on that so you can actually see it a little bit. Now she needs to push that above that yellow line. Good. Above the yellow line tells us that she's in a very focused state. She wants to keep that there while she's doing her homework. Because when she's above the yellow line, she's in a peak performance state or her maximum state of attention. And by staying there, we know she's going to be able to finish her homework on time. Now, since she's an adult, she's balancing her checkbook. But if she were a child, you could have her do math, reading, Very good. spelling, and you can hear that play attention gives her feedback. As long as she's staying in the zone, she gets the visual feedback, plus she'll get auditory feedback as well, telling her when she's in or not in the attentive state. This enables her to learn to stay in a peak performance state while she's doing something as boring as homework. Now, can you tap your pen for me like students do when they get a little bored? Watch what happens to the red ball. Focus. I just told her to focus. Now stop your activity. Go back to focus, a full attentive state. Good. Focus. Good. Good. Now she's back in that state. Now every 30 seconds or so, the computer or play attention will tell her when she is doing well. It'll just give her a little bit of reinforcement. If she crosses that yellow line, it's going to tell her to focus because she's out of her attentive state. In this way, again, we can teach her to do homework in an appropriate amount of time without us as parents good. or teachers standing over her and threatening or coercing or begging or pleading. Again, this is a fabulous way to use play attention to learn to do homework on one's own.